we are back and we are live and I get to do one of my favorite things, introduce you to a new member of the News for the Soul family. She has a fun name, Marilee Milmo, and her show, Super Soul Solutions, is happening on the fourth Thursday of the month at 4 p.m. Pacific. That starts now. We're going to get to know her. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do our normal introduction interview and then about halfway through the show or thereabouts, going to be addressing the corona issue energies, uh, sharing insights on the upside of the universal reset, and then doing um, a meditation, a group meditation for us all at the end. So that's what's happening. So stick around. But let's start at the beginning of the beginning. Marilee, welcome to News for the Soul. Hey, Nicole. Happy to be here. Yay. <laughs> Happy to be anywhere at this point <laughs> of time. <laughs> and here in particular. Yeah. <laughs> so great to speak with you. Great to hear your voice. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with our universal first question. It's the place that connects us all as a movement and group and on-air family community um, because it gets to the crux of what we're doing, our purpose, which is trying to find out what's really real and what's really possible. Um, mm-hmm. So the place we begin, begin is to ask, you know how we've all had a direct experience with something outside the 3D norm? You know how we were told what is real and we had an experience that was outside of that little box? <laughs> and it usually yeah. wakes us up and sets us on our path. I'm curious what your earliest memory of some such thing would be and also your most profound experience. So wherever you'd like to go. Hmm. Okay, thank you. And I'd like to thank uh, the listeners for tuning in. Let's see. Um, I feel my moment of awakening was not so much a moment, but rather a continual opening process that was propelled by my curiosity and was the reason I went into 43 years of research, five hours a night. So... Uh, The experience I probably first had was around 19 years old that first consciously opened me up to that there was something more, and it was provided by my mom who arranged for me to have my first psychic or Akashic record reading. (laughs) And Hmm. I was a little, you know, I was healthily discerning and a little like, okay, whatever. And the specific things that were shared in that reading resonated with me so deeply that they could not be denied. So this reading served as a precursor for me backpacking across Europe and Africa for several months right after college graduation. And this ended up quite an adventure and was lead me, lead, led me into the field of healing. Because well, up to that even time, get there. Uh, I, I love the details. Like, what happened in the reading that instigated the, that travel? That oh, oh, well, she brought up who I was, where I was from originally, uh, which is off planet, and um, where my soul was, and that why I was challenged to be willing to mate with any man here. <laughs> <laughs> and oh yeah, which was interesting. And she took me back to my very first life with my twin soul. And she said some things that were so real that I almost went into fetal position and started crying. So that oh. was really a surprise to me. And she even quoted something that I don't share because it's not something I'm proud of, but um, I usually don't share, but. I would, in college or high school, my friends would go, why don't you go out with him or why don't you go out with him? And I would always respond, "Um, I guess I could, but he's only second best. And she literally on the reading quoted that. She said, because you know what real love is, uh, because you've had that experience of love, you're not willing to settle for anything less. And so you think that most of the men on the planet are uh, only second best, and you need to be willing to drop that idea <laughs> mm. and move on. So um, that was a bit of particular information. 
And also, when I returned from Africa, I had another reading with her, and I contracted three, in quote, no cure for diseases. And um, I had the first time in my life an experience of what it was like to be uh, cogent but have your body not respond. As yellow mm. fever, typhus, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I didn't know that at the time, but I needed to experience that level of compassion and experience because my future destiny was to be in the healing field. And it doesn't do a great job if someone says, I'm not feeling well, and I just go snap out of it. (laughs) 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 So um, she put me in touch with a being on the other side who came through her. This was on phone. And immediately when I heard his voice come through her, she was a full trans channel, I said, Uncle Max. And this was not conscious because my head's still going, okay, okay, whatever. Um, And he said, ah, you do remember me. His name was Maximilian. He is still Maximilian. So he was a doctor, and we had had a past life together, and he was my protector and overseer, as I backpacked across Africa, had spears thrown at me, all kinds of interesting things, uh, which is too long to talk about. And he was the one that compelled me to come back home to heal. And I was very stubborn and self-righteous. And I said, no way. I slept four months overland to get to the animal reserves and to be with the animals and blah, blah, blah. And he said, it is now time, merely, whether you decide to be a child or a grown-up woman. Uh, We cannot force you to do anything, but I am telling you, you have three diseases that will not be cured there. And at the time, I was in such denial because I was going down the Nile. I was about the only white person there. Uh, I was in first class, which uh, was an experience of bed bugs, uh, goat poop, and whatever else. Uh, We were an old, 100-year-old kind of paddle wheeler pushing three barges of second and third class, and they ran out of food halfway there. So um, it was a rather interesting experience, and I think I got a little down because I had always said I have to return to Africa, and I didn't even know what that meant consciously. But I would say, I have to return to Africa, and my college walls were always, you know, uh, animals, wild animals, things like that. So... um, it ended up being an amazing experience where he said, no, you don't have to come back, but we have been able to protect and be with you as guides, and uh, I have the honor of being with you because uh, I am a healer, and um, we will be in touch once you get home if you decide to come home. So it was the hardest decision, actually, in my life because I was five miles from the nearest game reserve after four months of travel. <laughs> And I have a very strong body, so I was in denial that I was sick uh, because everyone around me was so worse off. You know, the average people there are throwing up blood, have the horse, all kinds of interesting things. So I did make that decision. And when I got home, I was still in such denial that I joined the gym and then after an hour, more or less, kind of crumpled to the floor. Oh, wow. So being a little humbled, I got back home, and my mother politely said, now are you ready to listen? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kind of going, rah, 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 rah. And uh, so I said, okay. So from then on, this is g- going to get even wilder story, so I'm not sure if you'll find it that interesting. But um, mm-hmm. feeling we will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Basically, you know, and again, my mother was into a little drama, and she thought this was big fun. fun. Nobody in the family knew what was going on other than that I was sick. My wonderful stepfather, Mel, he would, of course, finance anything that I needed at any time, and so he was just concerned I was sick and whatever she needed, please, you know, get some help. So... Uncle Max comes on, and I'm kind of grumbling, and he goes, okay, so we finally got you to stop, and we're happy you're here, 
And I said, and he said, I'm here, and I'm here with a team of doctors on the other side, and we're really excited because we have a huge plan for you. <laughs> hmm. And I said, I said, yeah, 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 like what? And he goes, well, he said, you have three diseases that many people have when they come into this country. One's a new strain of typhus, one's a new blood parasite, the other's yellow fever. And they tend to uh, diagnose that as hepatitis. And what we want you to do is be a bit guinea pig, be willing to be a guinea pig. And up to that time, I don't think I've ever been in a hospital except for birth. I'm trying to remember. So um, up to that time, uh, yeah, that's that's true. So basically, my mother's all excited about this because she's going, oh, this is going to be a really wonderful experience. And I said, well, I don't feel I need to do that to get healthy. I said, I'm a fast healer. Um, whatever. And he said, no, you don't, my child. But we would ask that this would contribute to the saving of thousands and thousands of people's lives. So he knew how to get me. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I thought it was a little dramatic. But he <laughs> said, this will, he said, uh, we will, you know, we will guide you every way. We will talk with you every day in the hospital. You have the right to locate the best people you want and to pick the doctor you want that you think will be the most open that we can work with without him knowing we're working with you. And we're going to guide him to find all the symptoms that normally are missed when they look in a microscope and stuff so that they can thus recognize it in the future and help people better. Now, at the time, none of these three diseases had any cure. So I had no fear, but I definitely, you know, was like sunlight. I was a little weaker, and sunlight was too strong for me, and my I was slightly jaundiced and things like that. So my mother and I, um, my, my stepfather, Mel, said, I think – my mother shared with him, and he said, sure, if she needs to go to the hospital, fine. That's all he knew about that. Uh, so she said, Merrily, we're going to be doing – it was like a mission impossible. And I went, okay. So we ended up going to, like, UC San Francisco. I'm up in Northern California, and we interviewed the top um, medical doctor in diseases of that sort. And you're going to laugh at this. He decided, he asked my mother, you know, to leave the room. And I said, anything you have to say to me, you can say in front of my mother. He says, okay, well, I think you're pregnant. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, needless to say, I had to hold back hysterical laughter because that would have had to be an immaculate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I went, oh, really? And he explained to me why he thought. And he says, and you probably have hepatitis, which is just like what Uncle Max said. And he said, we can't do a lot for that, but blah, 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 blah. Okay. So basically, Mom and I said, okay, well, thank you so much. And we politely fired him. And we continued on. And he goes, Meryl, and then she says to me, Marilyn, you're not t- they're not taking you seriously because you have, still have too much energy. We have to get their attention. So we ended up with a man named John Catchpole, Dr. John Catchpole, at Marine General in uh, Marin County, where I live, after interviewing several. And my mother liked him because he was the astrological sign of a large part of our family, which were all Cancerians. And he, as we were kind of interviewing him, but he didn't know we were interviewing him. He just was like, well, so what's going on and all this stuff? Uh, he mentioned that he had been over in Africa and contracted a disease that took him two years to heal, which he said was hepatitis. So we knew that he was the guy. So Mm. basically we just put ourselves in. At the time, um, my generous father paid for a single room. That was the only time I'd been in a hospital. I'm like, okay, I felt like I was in a total movie, which I did in Africa also when spears were throwing past and all kinds of interesting things. I felt like I was in Disneyland or something. But anyway, so I never was scared or anything like that. didn't have any that feeling at all. I I absolutely had and still do total confidence that I can be healed from anything and have proven to be so. So um, 
So basically, there was about three or four or five days there from my memory. And what was happening is Uncle Max would tune in through this woman on the phone to me once a day. And my mother would be keep checking with me. So he would call when my mother was there in the hospital with me. And he says, you know, we have a hard time because there's no time and space here. And you're not getting their attention. We need to get their attention and get this project going onward. And I'm like, okay, Max, well, what am I supposed to do? And he goes, do we have permission to make you sicker? So we need to really get his attention. Uh, and we're working on him on this side to open his mind up. And I said, uh, sure, no problem. Well, in two hours, my excuse this if this is too uh, coarse, but my species were pure white and my urine was pure black. <laughs> And they started running around the hospital. And he came in, and the coolest thing, the only really reason that I decided to accept him as a doctor, because no offense, but I don't really have doctors ever in my life, but um, even though I respect them and I have many friends, but the only reason I accepted him was because at the time he was experimenting with intravenous vitamin C. And this was back in 1975. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so, so I knew that that would be the only thing that they could give me that would indeed assist me. And my mother, uh, through her intuitive capacity, just liked him for a variety of other reasons and felt he was the same person. So that's how we had come to the agreement. So the, the, the one benefit I got out of that experience, besides all the other subtle benefits, was that uh, the IV did assist me. So they go running around, and uh, they're like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, I like this. And so they put in the IV, and I was on that for three or four days, which was great. And um, mm-hmm. so the next day comes, we're on the phone, and uh, Max goes, hey, we got his attention. How would you like that? <laughs> no. <laughs> And I'm not, I'm not feeling sick. I'm not feeling anything. I mean, I, I feel fine. I'm very, um, I have a lot of yang energy, energy to me, and I was much more softer and, uh, you know, quieter, but I was never one second in pain or anything. So I said, okay, uh, Mr. Drama, I was joking with Uncle Max, and I said, okay, uh, uh, can can you? We don't have to keep this like your thing up. And he goes, No, no, we don't. We got his attention. He said, So here's your next project for tomorrow when he comes. And I go, Okay. He says he's going to first diagnose you with hepatitis. And I said, Okay. And he said, It's not. It's a form of yellow fever. And the one of the symptoms that is different between those two is that you have a lot of crack skin in your toes and all this kind of stuff. And he said, you Attention to that. We also, and he was giving me assignments every day. And so I said, okay, this is going to be interesting. So, you know, and my mom and I felt like we were playing actors in a movie. It was really kind of like, we were just like chuckling to ourselves. Like, okay, whatever. So he hangs up, and uh, the next day when John Cashpool comes in, who is a wonderful man, it was very respectful. I kind of did the thing where, hey, Doc, thanks so much. Really appreciate you. And, you know, by the way, my toes, which they weren't itching, but I said, my toes are kind of like hurting a little and itching. So I got his attention looking at it. He goes, oh, yeah. He said, that's rather unusual. And especially since you're hybrid in that, and he went off on that. So we got that accomplished. And then he came back the next day and he said, you know, I think you might have yellow fever. <laughs> so that was accomplished. So then the next thing was um, – I'm on the phone the next day with Uncle Max, and he goes, okay, Marilee, we have to get them to take blood from you in the early morning because the kind of parasite you have, and he said, I can describe it to you, and um, I want you to draw a picture. I'm, like, I'm laughing. I'm like, okay. And he said, it's like a small whale. And the problem is when they look in these microscopes, they are looking for what they recognize, just like we as beings here on the planet only see what we know exists, Right? We can only see what often what we know right. exists, right, or what we think exists, or what we allow to be possible. So he said, it's in front of it. Pardon me. Our frame of reference. Yes, exactly, exactly. Well said. So um, 
long and short of it, I had to, I drew a picture and I go, Mom, how are we going to pull this off? And so he came in and I just said, so basically let me backtrack a little bit. So he said, you have to get them to take samples because these paras- this parasite you have, this new blood parasite you have, proliferates the most between 2 and 4 in the morning. <laughs> so, okay. So, so John Catchpole comes in, and my mom and I look at him and I go, uh, you know, you're the, you know, and sincerely was respectful and flattering him, but I said, you need to take a seat, doctor. And I said, he said, okay. And I said, did you have a hard day? We talked a little bit on him. He goes, no. And I said, okay, here's the deal. I, and this is the only way I could figure out how to get it across. I said, I have dreams, and those dreams usually come true. And have you ever heard of that? Oh, well, yeah, I have a little bit. And so I come from an intuitive family, and I drew this picture here. And, he, and I said, I'm going to give it to you. And he goes, oh, it looks like a little whale. And I said, yeah, it does. I'm not a very good drawer. And I said, I'm going to give it to you. And I have a request that is going to be very unusual. However, we will pay you any amount of money you need to. And he goes, okay, as long as it's ethical. And I said, oh, yeah, it's very ethical. Uh, I said, we, I need blood drawn between 2 and 4 in the morning because isn't it true? I said, I've studied medicine and things. Isn't it true that some some, um, you know, parasites proliferate in the early morning. He said, yeah, yeah, that's a, a common time where they, they can do that. And I said, great. So I, I just have this sense, this premonition that this parasite is in me, and I would like my mother's willing to pay for you to take extra tests during that time of night while I'm here, and then to look under a microscope to see if they exist. And he was very quiet for about two minutes, and or a little less. And uh, Uncle Max and the doctor team on the other side, teams on the other side, had been said they'd been working on opening him up, so to, to his heart, being receptive. And so he agreed. And at the time, he said, well, it'll be a little extra money, but it shouldn't be too bad at the time. So it was that. So they came in, of course, the nurses that early morning, took blood, blah, 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 blah. I'm feeling like, okay, mission's accomplished. Can I get out of the hospital? And the next day, he comes back and he said, uh, we did check this out and we didn't see it. And I went, hmm. So he left. I got really mad. Mm-hmm. Uncle Mac is on the phone, and I'm like, okay, you guys, <laughs> you know, what's up? And he goes, oh, we're so sorry. He called me Marley. That was my name when I was his more or less daughter, niece, and my name in this life is Marley, which is interesting. Hmm. And he'd say, my, my dearest Marley, he said, it is our fault because we are still getting accustomed to the time and space and whatever. In this parasite, we can now see that in your world, it's so minuscule that it has to be seen by a really advanced microscope. I'm not sure if it was an electron microscope or what, and there are only two right now, one in San Diego and one somewhere else. He said, I said, are you telling me I have to talk him into taking a sample of my blood and going and doing that? And he said, I mean, and... Uncle Max said, if you're willing, this is only from your free will, but it will eventually help thousands. So I went, okay, whatever, because I'm in no pain, I'm in no discomfort, I'm fine. So, so, um, so you can imagine the next day, my mom and I are plotting, going, how are we going to pull this one off? So the next day he comes in, and he's used to us being a little different, <laughs> and we're all <laughs> jovial. You know, I'm jovial, and he's going, oh, I just love your attitude going through this. And I go, thank you. And uh, hey. <laughs> I go, thank you. And I appreciate your mutual respect because I know we're a little different. And he goes, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so he said, your numbers are, are, you know, a little better. So Uncle Max, they hadn't shifted the, I mean, they were still keeping it enough to get their attention, so I'm a priority. But um, completely healthy yet until that was done. So, so I said, okay, uh, Dr. Kessler, you got to sit down on this one. <laughs> Have you had your coffee? He, he kind of smiled and he goes, okay, what's up? 
and I said, are there such a thing as micro they're called electron or whatever, that have the ability to look at things that are really small because I keep getting this premonition and this picture of this needs to be seen. It's extremely small mm-hmm. and the parasite needs to be seen in such a microscope. Or, and he goes, well, we only have two that are available and I wouldn't be able to get to it, but tomorrow is my day off. And, uh, however, it's not covered in insurance and blah, 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 blah. And my mother speaks up and says, we will pay any amount for you to do that. And he was very quiet. (laughs) And I said, "Um, it would mean a lot. And he goes, well, I think it only ended up back then $500 or something. And, of course, my uh, stepfather's paying for this, which is lovely. (laughs) He doesn't really know what's going on other than uh, I'm hopefully getting healthier in the hospital, right? And I'm just saying, yeah, things are fine. They're just doing tests. So so um, he ended up, long and short, cut to the chase, he ended up uh, doing that. Amazing that he was willing to do that. And he came back and he said, we found it. <laughs> and so I went, oh, oh. I went, oh, great. Um, And so I said, great. And he ended up, I think, later writing a paper on it. Uh, He was in Sausalito for a long time where I had my healing center with 11 practitioners. And and, uh, I noted, you know, so I never, like, followed up, but I'm pretty sure he wrote eventually a paper on it. So, so then, so he discovered the yellow fever. He found the the blood parasite. And then I had to get him to see the new strain of typhus, and that was accomplished through more drama and uh, that kind of thing. And then he came in and he said, "Wow!" He he said, "So I said, so how long will I be here, doctor?" And he goes, "Oh, probably. You know, I think you use this vitamin C and hydration, and you know, probably at least a week or two. It depends on your numbers." So I said, okay. Well, I said, I'll probably be leaving tomorrow. And he said, that's the <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and so, and so, so um, he left. He's a delightful being. I have the highest respect for him. And um, I basically was in touch with Max, and Max said, okay, we've done the job. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun. We'll talk to you once you get back home. Uh, and the next day, all my numbers were back to normal. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And so so I went back home, and uh, then he gave me really simple things. Like he said, okay, you have to uh, heat up a lemon in the oven and uh, mash it until they're slightly brown. And he said, so my mother was giving me those exact things. Because quite frankly, this was the only time in my life where I didn't really want food and I wasn't even thirsty. So, um, so I would say, and then there was even more interesting conversations between Max and me, but I don't want to bore the audience. (laughs) So, um, I don't think you're going to bore the audience. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm, I'm also um, wanting them, you know, to help with this whole virus thing going on. So I don't want to really talk that much about me, but um, that kind of thing. So the bottom line was I was completely healthy with it. In fact, I went out running the next day, and he admonished me. He admonished me. He goes, Merrily, stop it. And then he got a little too involved with my boyfriend at the time, and I, I – I don't really want to say this publicly or embarrass. He is a good friend of mine. He's one of the nicest men I've ever met. And according to Uncle Max, well, I, I will say this because it's an interesting lesson. Uh, I won't use names, though. So according to Uncle Max, he became, Uncle Max kind of, I noticed, slipped understandably out of the role of healer, guy, into a fatherly role, which I which because I was more or less his daughter in a previous life and died at a young age under him, who was a doctor at that time. So he started going morally. 
the man that you are dating, he's not good enough for you. He's not evolved enough for you. <laughs> ah. <laughs> he started giving me, yeah, he started giving me fatherly advice. And um, this man is wonderful. I mean, any woman would, like, give her eye teeth for him. And I said, um, I said, well, <clears throat> I, I uh, said, I am not going to leave him right away. Uh, I enjoy him. It's all fine. And, and I said, uh, he was the first, I'm the first person he's ever made love with. And I take that seriously. I'm not going to just discard him because I said, I know he's not, how do I say this? Uh, everyone's, a, everyone's an equal, but I, you know what I mean, when, for long term long term. However, that doesn't mean that I'm going to dismiss him or whatever else. And then he said, as you wish. And then I kind of uh, spanked him. And I said, Max, I said, you are going beyond. You are getting too involved. And I know that you mean well, but this is none of your business. And I appreciate what you've done for me for healing and everything else and how it's opened up an experience that there are more dimensions and more things, I will be eternally grateful. You have helped me learn why I went back to Africa, which I was going, why did I go to Africa? It was so depressing for me. Uh, there was, you know, there's hardly any animals. There's this. And he goes, I will send you the message in your dream, and if you can't remember, I will tell you. So after about a month and a half, when I was all better, and I mean all better, um, he came in very sadly. And he said, my dearest Marley, you were indeed correct. And I said, about what? And he said, because of my love for you and our past lives together, I overstepped my count. And because of that, I am being reassigned. <laughs> yeah. And I wow. started crying. And I said, I, don't, I didn't mean to be so hard on you. He said, no, you are correct. I said, um, he said, I moved into a father position, with, which was not my right. And this man is a wonderful man and I as a father I was uh, sending the message makes me quick gotta cry sending the message that nobody's Aww. good enough for my daughter kind of thing really silly so anyway um, so I felt a little bad but I was in my righteousness <laughs> <laughs> at the time and uh so he said, I'm able to give you the gift of why you went to Africa and why you've always loved animals and um, so much. He said, you went there to pick up energy that you had left from previous lives. And did you notice that you understood Swahili almost immediately? And I said, yes. And he, he said, did you notice that the people loved you? I said, yes. And he said, um, do you notice that you can automatically African dance professionally with no training and I said yes <laughs> and he said he said that is because of some past lives but I'm going to take you back to the very very first creation of Africa and you came in as a divic spirit you can think of that as angel or or high nature spirit and he said you taught the lions and the zebras what to eat how to get along how to work you were one of the first and oldest beings here. And because of that, you have always been drawn because you wanted to go back and see those animals. And one of the reasons you got sick, besides the fact you said you were going to be a healer, is that um, it was so sad for you to see so much poaching and hardly any animals and pollution and everything. Mm. Because in your soul memory, you remembered it as this vast land of beauty. Oh. Wow. You know Hello. what? I got I to jump in at this point and tell you, because we're already at the 40-minute okay. mark almost. Like, it's just going to fly by. So we're going to have to do your introduction interview in stages, I think. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is the first stage. I think I got well, one or two questions. <laughs> I know. This is great. We are going to have such fun together. Oh, my God. Um we want to be of service today. There's a bajillion people on the lines and, and uh, tuning in. So we promised to get to the coronavirus. So let's, 
let's just jump yeah. forward and okay, get so your so your much. perspective on this. Okay, Nicole, how about this? How about if I kind of read, um, let's take the meditation out at the end. And what I'd like for people to do, even though that's important, but I can give them directions how to do that. And I have ideas right now as we're moving because of the time limit, because we only have like 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> I have a bunch of things I can talk about. And what I can promise for the audience is if they go to my, uh, if they contact me at Merrily at Super Soul Solutions, Okay. dot com or my website. Uh, well, just contact me there. My website is Super Soul Solutions. I will transcribe uh, the entire thing that I wanted to share with them, and happy to give that to them free. Um, and those things are the intro and facts about. And so people can vote on what. They can call in on the chat or I can do questions. I'm totally in the flow with you, which is not something that's easy for me, but I'm in the flow. <laughs> so I'm working on it. I'm more commando type. I'm working on it. So um, sections that I wanted to speak about are the present cycle of transformation and awakening, the upside, how we can use this time for our betterment, Five possible agendas for creating this particular virus, which some people might be a little shocked about. And, um, and then a quote from Abraham, out of Abraham Hicks, about who you are and how you can change reality. So that all is related, but I can send people the, um, to my website where I have Five of my most favorite tools out of 40 years of being a holistic health practitioner with a bunch of other things, these are my five favorites that they can use to transform their fear. So I don't know if people want to vote in which one of those I mean, or if we... I would say the last one you mentioned is the one that jumps out the most right now because people are freaking out. Okay, the yes, upside. Okay, but I also have the tools to get them to, I mean, to help them not freak out. Okay, yeah. because there are some facts that you're not being told about this virus, so that's what I was going to start off with. But, but um, what? Do that a little bit first. Yeah, let's do that first, and then and then some tools to in the five. Yeah, the the first thing and the last thing. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Okay, so basically, this virus was bioengineered. And from the information I got from insiders and lots and lots of research to the tune of hundreds of hours, um, it was bioengineered, targeting adults, not humans. Um, it was an experiment for a variety of reasons, actually. Done by whatever you want to call it, probably different teams, I don't like to create polarity, but you can say deep state, certain mm -hmm. beings who enjoy doing this kind of thing. So um, it was an experiment to see several different things. Um, so this has to do with why they created the particular virus. I don't know if you want to know that so much. Um, you want to know in brief, why not? We're there. Okay. Well, first let me, because I want to talk about the power of the body, because I'm absolutely in the body. Absolutely. I'm kind of a body whisperer. And I've healed myself from uh, cancer at warp speed. I've healed myself from broken, broken bones in a couple days. I've healed myself uh, from, I don't know, you know, from the story I just told you with a lot of help. And I think it's because it's not because I'm special at all. I love the Dalai Lama quote that says, no one is special, yet everyone is unique and essential. <laughs> so so um, I love bodies. I have faith in bodies. And a lot of people are scared of the bodies. And that's a whole other thing. But one of the things I wanted to bring up to them is, did you know that each one of you has 380 trillion viruses in your body? 
Mm. Which, okay. You also have 60 trillion bacteria in your body. Now, that doesn't appear to freak you out, right? You are made up of 6 trillion cells. So, if you think of it this way, when you are healthy, 6 trillion of your cells are living in balance with 10 times more bacteria than them and 6,333 times more viruses than the cells in your body. Now, if that is not an example of your body's capacity and synergistic cooperation, I don't know what is. <laughs> okay. The Petri dish. Yuck. <laughs> yeah. Now, the reason... Okay, a lot of this stuff has been so overhyped. So it's not that it's not a virus. It's not that it's not serious. It's not as serious. This was an experiment in spreading fear. <clears throat> was one of the reasons. Uh, I don't know if you want those five reasons. But um, the other thing people need to know is it happened in Wuton. Is that the correct uh, pronunciation? Yes. Wuton, China, because it was known as an extremely polluted place. The locals there mm-hmm. drink out of a joint water supply, and they smoke a lot. And so their lungs are already compromised. And this virus was specifically designed to target lungs. Okay? So it was targeted to a couple of places for different reasons. Now, if I was going to cut to the chase, I would say, and please excuse me, I'm very direct, fake problem. Oh, my God, the virus is going to kill us all. (laughs) The real problem, we have worldwide immune compromised people who who do not have their own gardens and are not eating or cannot afford non-GMO, healthy food, good water, clean air, and are stressed and freaked out. The real solution how do we improve the health of the people by clean food, clean water, and clean air? And I am here to tell you, and this is from insiders and traveling around and people I have met that are such geniuses and inventors and amazing, super, super advanced people. I am here, and I wish to have a couple of those on my future shows for sure that up as we speak, but this will be hard, probably not for your audience, because I appreciate that your audience is probably very sophisticated and advanced, being positively oriented in the first place to be even a part of your show. <laughs> so, and, and, thank you, Nicole. <laughs> and, th- and thank you, Nicole, for that. Uh, but we have the ability and advanced solutions right now To clean up all of that, okay? That is how the disparity between which the the public is allowed to know about and the ones and corporations that that kind of enjoy the power and control, the fear-mongering and greed, uh, have available to them. Uh, one of the things about bioengineered viruses, unfortunately, is many, many have been made, are made, like SARS, Mars, et cetera. This is a common thing uh, on this planet and on other planets. And the bad part of it, or the negative part, is it's sold to the highest bidder. Okay? So that's part of what's going on. So this was a, uh, another stage experiment to see, um, and again, the, this took a lot of research for me, and I will just say there are five possible reasons for creating the virus, and then we'll, we'll immediately go to the upside, okay? But let me, let me say this first. A very wise being from Andromeda, no matter how weird that sounds, said he would like to see the human race keep their innocence and drop their naivety. Hmm. Okay? And I was I will tell you that through the first half of my life I was the most judgmental 
the most black and white, like only tolerated white, you know, black and white person, um, wouldn't talk to anyone who swore, drank, any of that stuff, <laughs> you know, that whole thing, and naive because I had a, uh, what I consider a very nice upbringing compared to most. So, so I came about my research and discovery not so much from going through hardships, I would say, but from me putting pieces together of why people, especially women, hated themselves in bodies, of why mm. uh, healing was so slow here, of why, things like that. So that's what took me and why we, back then, they said you only use 10% of your brain. I went, that's crazy. Nature makes, never makes anything she doesn't use. I have to find out what the rest is used for. So that took me into my research. It wasn't because, you know, I had all these hardships. So I am not conspiratorial by nature. However, I, ha- I was exceptionally naive. So I, these things don't frighten me at all because I'm so used to it. I've had 40 years of research getting, you know, used to it. So I, the last thing I want is anyone to be in more fear, but this part of this time of transition is about awakening to the fullness of who you are as a full-on creator and and how you can do that. And also uh, the fact that there are some other beings given free will who uh, love controlling and their job is to try and prevent us kind of from waking up, so to speak. And that's their free will. So the only way to make that not happen is not by fighting or rebelling. The only way to make that not happening is for us to wake up to who we are, our true power inside ourselves, directly aligned with source, and understand the game, because I have a whole different take on what I call Earth Game Mastery than I did growing up. There, It is a form of game here, and I do not mean to belittle the suffering, but it is a uh, game here. I will tell you that from outsiders and off-worlders, they said a hundred years in terms of soul growth on Earth is equal to a hundred thousand years on almost every other planet and dimension we've been to. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So I need, to te- I need to tell you out there, all you listeners, that you are so courageous and so brave and so mm-hmm. masterful. And this has been a game where that has been kind of um, it's not your fault. There's nothing you did wrong. It's just we have all have been programmed into a limitation. And into the biggest thing here, which is what this virus taught and confirmed for those guys, was how easily one could be manipulated through fear into the herd mentality and to giving away their power. Mm. That was part of the, the experiment. So, um, you know, and so fear is very strong. And also one needs to realize, and I have the highest respect for all, all professions. I've been doctors in parallel lives. So, however, uh, you know, surgery and drugs, we know from underground and top secret insiders that 80% of all medications that anyone takes, the human body is allergic to. Okay. So what they're going to do is they're going to try to push a vaccine, and that's a whole other subject. Bill Gates came out two years ago and said, oh, we're going to have a pandemic, but don't worry, we'll save you. So my point here, and then enough of this, but my point here is through lifetimes and lifetimes, the humans here, I am a human too, the humans here, we have been programmed into victim-perpetrator paradigm Mm -hmm. and through church and through school to give our own personal power to authority figures. And that's what this is about. This is one of the huge lessons in accelerating for humans here right now. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. So uh, instead of going into all that, I'm just going to go to the positive, which is where I like to hang out. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, by the way, this um, we only have. Uh, we'll try to be really quick here, so I'm going to be talking fast. But don't worry because I will transcribe and make 
make available to anyone who wants. Um, we can you know, also run it bit over time. So it's, it's just a pre-tape after you, so we've got some flexibility. Oh, cool. Okay, well, you just, you just give me warning and let me know. And I also want to address people's questions. So, or if they want to call in or anything, that's that's important. No, we have a lot of callers. <laughs> this might be a while. <laughs> okay, everyone, just pitch your tent. Just go ahead. Okay. So, um, I know I'm hopping around here because, you know, just how it's flowing. But let me tell you the upside. And some of you, I'm sure, have already figured all of this out and are using it to your for your better benefit. Okay, we, and this has been proven in astrology and predicted, but every 18 years we go through a cycle like this. The last one was 9-11. Okay? So we consider this as like a universal timeout, like to give everyone time to recenter and play nice, number one. <laughs> so it's mm. kind of like a forced spiritual retreat, if you will. Yeah. It's really to work through the fear. And I have tools, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I can share tons of tools about that. But And to get you to know your true, authentic self better, you're, mm-hmm. you can think of it as your improved version two, and integrate that as your new program. So love with mm-hmm. wisdom is our superpower, <laughs> okay? Yeah. And you'd be surprised how, uh, how it can heal you. And by the way, most auras are at most three feet out. When we can build them up to nine feet, nothing can affect us. That's a whole other subject. So let me go mm. through really quickly, really quickly, five things. Now remember, creators and co-creators out there, that cosmic law one is here. You have the Mars expanse. All right. So there are, I can share with you the way that I use to quickly shift myself out of fear. It's really easy. It takes like one minute, and I can do that if you want. But let me go through the five, the five um, ways we, can, we are using this challenge. Now, as creators, almost every single one of these, my clients have talked to me that they have been wishing for this the last 15 years. Okay, Okay. so here's what you manifested as an upside of the challenge as creators so far. One, you wanted more time in your life to gently slow down and enjoy. Now, most of you have that. Two, you wanted your boss to allow you to work more often at home. Now, most of you have that. Three. You wanted more time to be with your children and family, get off the tax, play indoor games. Now most of you have that. <laughs> you needed more time to develop a workable awareness practice to help you recenter, like simple, like deep breathing, meditation, earthing, standing on the earth barefoot, yoga, anything. Now many of you are doing that. You wanted more time to get in better shape and have time to hike outside and enjoy nature and really reconnect with the all wonder and beauty of nature. Most of you are doing that. Granted, no more than two people at a time, which is a whole <laughs> other farce, but we won't get into that. But <laughs> you wanted more time to get in better shape and have time, like I said, to to do that. Okay, I repeated that. Sorry. Six. You wanted more time to prioritize your health, eat better, and hydrate. Now, many of you are cooking at home, taking supplements for your immune system. I have a list of those and a shout out. I can send you really fast. I don't make any money on them. I just, you know, it's just what I do. And and many of you probably know all about that. The Taking the basic vitamins are very important, by the way, especially D, A, B, C, D. And focusing on healthier habits that boost your immune system. Seven, you asked for more time to clean out your garage oh, <laughs> and finish projects getting clearer about mm-hmm. what are necessities and what is accumulated excess. And some of you are doing that. Eight. You ask for greater opportunities to connect with others. 
to hang out with a few people, to laugh more, talk more, play more. Physical distancing is not social distancing. Now, many are doing it on Zoom and Skype Mm -hmm. and connecting in small groups at home. Nine, you ask for simple ways you could serve your neighbors or others, especially the elderly. Now, you have more time and many opportunities to show you care. Ten, you ask that the planet gets healthier and pollution cleared up. And I received a couple days ago, um, because I don't spend one second on mainstream news, so I rely on my wonderful clients, many of who are listening, and, and people, thank you for listening, to tell me what's actually going on, quote, unquote. <laughs> mm-hmm. So they, they told me that in a very short, uh, what's been reported is dolphins and swans are returning to places they haven't been in a long time because the waters are cleaner. And that's for obvious reasons. We're not polluting with our cars, the industry. So much has gone quieter that the earth can begin to repair herself naturally. So we are part of a larger plan, and we co-create this together, solution to awaken ourselves and reset old outworn systems, which includes stopping the victim-perpetrator paradigm, and giving your power away to governments, organizations, and people, okay, rather than accessing your quiet, still voice within, your inner knowing, it's very simple, and your own self-authority. So opportunities to evolve don't always come in the form we expect. (laughs) <laughs> and we could, we could, as a collective consciousness, because we are all one united, as you know, we could have learned to mature and go through this phase in an easier way. But you know how we are as humans. We're pretty stubborn and complacent. And most of the time we're not like, oh, things are just, things are good, so I think I'll change. So usually we change <laughs> when we're back against the wall. And so nothing like this level of fear yeah. has happened before in our recorded history. That's okay? right. I'm talking recorded because there's much more history than what's recorded. Yeah. And this could serve if utilized right, and it already has. People are more loving to each other. They're helping each other out. But it speeds up the opportunity for growth and come together is one world in compassion and love. Hmm. So those are the positives, okay? And this this virus, I need to tell you, was not designed to kill. We're not over the bumps and the shakes. So we really, oh, uh, I'm, I'm here to help as many people as I can. We are part of the, what we call, all of you listening are part of a transition team. We come to planets at their deepest times of transi- transition where we are, we are working on increasing the consciousness, reducing the fear. And fear will automatically go as you begin to know more and more who you are. And um, I have one client who is, uh, had written me in earlier, and she said, can you give me a quick thing that you do to reduce fear? Now, I'm not exceptionally fear-based, but I did get caught up in the whole thing for about mm. a day. And, um, you know, just because fear is contagious. Fear is a virus. <laughs> it is. Yep, okay? It is. And, er- and everything's a frequency. And so love and wisdom and especially joy, uh, which is easy for me to remember because that's the meaning of my name, <laughs> but especially mm-hmm. joy is the highest frequency. When you're running a highest frequency, as long as you ground it, you will not experience fear. This is this experience has taken people across a wide bandwidth of emotions, and you are to feel those emotions. There's nothing wrong with feeling that way. There's a, you're not a bad person for having fear, right? You, you know, it's it, that is the purpose to bring that up. And what I would like to do and many, many hundreds of others on this planet, is to provide you with simple tools where you can uh, fairly quickly reverse that. Now, last year, 2019, Astrologically, was all about 
people doing their homework <laughs> to prepare themselves for this time that they consciously didn't know was going to happen. <laughs> but everyone who incarnated here knew, they didn't know it was going to be a virus or any specifics, but they knew it would be rock and roll time. <clears throat> and uh, as we make this. Now, I am arrogant enough that I will say this. I believe that I and many, many, and probably most of you felt that come from the future. Back mm. at this point in time, at the most important time pretty much in universal history, and I am committed to holding the positive timeline from the future where I know we are absolutely successful. Now, mm. there's another thing. There's another thing uh, you should know. Because we deal with loss here and we deal with sorrow here. Our spirits and beings don't. Home is on the other side. I have interviewed close to 600 people who clinically died and came back to life. Didn't matter their religions or whatever. And I learned a lot of interesting things from them. And one of them is they, they, none of them wanted to come back into their bodies. The only reason they did was to teach Mm. the wisdom that we've forgotten because we are programmed to think different things. And they came back fearless and knowing who they were. That is our natural state. But we came here for a different kind of game. We came here because we made the decisions from knowing we're infinite and immortal. Because we are. And so we make those decisions from a fearless state. And it can be anything from, oh, shoot, okay, I'll do it, to, you know, sitting around in Starbucks upstairs and uh, shooting the breeze with, say, Sam. And I go, hey, Sam, I hear there's a call from this planet called Earth, and it's needing help. And uh, it's kind of going downhill, and it needs to get through this big bump in the road and move on, and uh, he goes, huh, well, you want, to, you want to go there? And I go, I don't know. And I said, I hear it's like you've got to be pretty wild because as soon as you're born, you don't remember who you are. And he goes, wow, that would be a trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that would be, what would that would be like? <laughs> so anyway, it's a completely <laughs> different perspective. here. Uh, let me put it this way. Um, this is a kind of a cute quote. A being from another planet, um, I'm trying to remember who it was, at Arcturian, I believe, he said this. He goes, we have the highest respect for you humans. You go, why? And he said, because we can't figure out how you can create anything. <laughs> and, you, and I said, why? And he goes, he goes because. At any moment, you're thinking one to 15 conflicting feelings and thoughts. God. <laughs> okay? Now, many on these planets, and there's life everywhere, folks. They're just this. Many uh, are, have two emotions. We have something like a, 127. And we all know. I mean, how many times have we gone, oh, my God, I'm so Oh, I'll nearly snap out of it. Oh, I think I'll put on sad music. Oh, I'm so pissed. I mean, all these things are going on. <laughs> and <laughs> so we're like a bunch of, kind of, you know, I mean, if I could tell you and share with you how and what I know you truly are, you would be kissing yourself upside and down. I'm telling you. You'd be going, Wow, because the challenges you took on to come here and who you really are as a master and, you know, that you've agreed to play this game. And for most, it's been very hard and in many ways. And an example of that, let, let me speak to this really quickly, is that you let me know if I'm running out of time, okay? <laughs> and then I want to take questions. <laughs> Because I could go on forever. Being being a quarter Irish, I come from storytellers. Right? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, anyway, 
I have a very dear friend because I collect unusual, unique beings. And I have a very dear friend who is deaf but hears through her body. So a lot of people don't know she's deaf. And um, I kind of was talking to her the other day. And I asked her the other day, Susan, you've been married a long time and also have gone through horrendous trials in your life, the most I have ever heard in my life, by the way. She may be listening. And still managed to end up being loving. Now, I know that love is not just a feeling, but how would you define love, Susan? And she responded, Love is not just a feeling. It is a state of being. And more importantly, love is a choice. I have a committed Hmm. awareness practice, she says, to choose love again, again, and again. Not that. So... One of the things I was going to talk about is the first requirement to move yourself through here is to contemplate the fact you actually could be a creator or a co-creator with Source however, and others. Then the next huge step is to move out as a victim, perpetrator, blame, forgive paradigm, to take full responsibility for our words, our actions, and our feelings. This is not about being perfect. Nothing like that. Nobody's going to punish you. The situation is truly, the more you realize your creator, the more you have an effect on reality. And everyone has unique versions of their reality, and they should. That's the point for maximum soul growth. But if we want to turn things around and not have to go through so much drama, we need to keep reminding ourselves that no matter what the situation is, we always have choice shift it in our thinking, in our thoughts, and in our feelings. This is forgotten a lot. It's intellectually understood, but it's not practiced. So what I do, and this is just what I do, it takes me one minute. So I'll do just a little brief thing saying I've always thought and felt, again, I'm I'm not exactly modest, but I felt that uh, I was the most positive I, person I knew when I was a teenager. So I got this idea to myself, and I went, okay, if we're creators, then it means everything we think, if we think negatively, if we think fearfully, if we think this, of course, we're here to experience all that and transform it and integrate it. But um, I'm, and so I go, I'm going to keep track of how many limiting our what we can call negative, disempowering thoughts today. So I took out a little pad and I just made little, you know, those little marks. I, if you had asked me, I would have said three. By the (laughs) time I got over a hundred, I stopped. Wow. And I'm like, yes. So we want to know why the world is like it is. There are some reasons that aren't totally our doing, so to speak, but as a mass consciousness, we decide every second what we want to create. And some of the off-worlders cracked up and they said, gosh, you guys are just like your movies. And I go, what are you talking (laughs) about? They They said, because you always wait for the last possible second after tons of drama and it looks like everyone's going to die and get killed and pull through. (laughs) (laughs) And I gotta say, uh, yep. Yep, true. Right? (laughs) So, um, part of it is the three major things are choice, realize, so play with the concept that you might be a creator, letting go of blame and forgiveness. There are many tools for that, supersoulsolutions.com, under, I think it is, I don't need to do this all from memory, I, um, you go to the menu that says Super Soul Tool, no, Super Soul Consulting, and then you scroll down and you'll find something that says Super Soul Tools. On that page, I put over 40 years, they're not mine, I'm a synthesizer of 
massive information and other people. So I just synthesize what I think and find and test myself to be the best of the best. Uh, so there I have five favorite methods for healing, healing anything. They're very effective. Well, here's where we're at. We're already 15 minutes past the hour. Um, there are still a bajillion callers on the lines. Why don't we take one okay. or two and then get oh, you to absolutely. do your and then get you to absolutely. do your guided uh, meditation after that. So well, I'm not going to do I, I'm not going to do the meditation um, because I'd rather take the questions at this point if okay. you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. No, I, thank yeah, I'm uh, go with the flow person over here. Okay. okay thank you, Paul. <laughs> Your code six four six. You're first. You're up. You're live with Marilyn on News for the Soul. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? You. Yeah. Yeah, it's shy. We're gonna to go to the next. Probably one. got tired of waiting. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no, they're still there. They just don't want to say anything. Eight oh five. How about you? What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Leo. Eight oh five. Is live. Okay, everyone's shy today. Oh my god. Six one seven. Let's try you. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Hello, it's Anne from Boston. Oh, this was it's one of the best Boston. shows you've ever had. Isn't that oh, amazing? amazing? Oh my God! In 23 years, yes. I've been sitting here the whole time thinking, "How did I find this woman?" But it's my upstairs. Well, remember, remember, I know how you feel me. I know too. <laughs> because of your intuitive <laughs> abilities. This is huge, Marilee. This is huge. This is Anne from Boston, who's been a caller for like 20 years on this show. And if she's <laughs> oh, not quite, not quite. Right? But I'm a huge Almost. fan. Huge fan. Almost. Well, Anne, um, thank you oh, so this much. This is so exciting. This is my, this is my first <laughs> time I've ever done radio or come <laughs> oh, really public. Keep doing it. So thank Just you. Just keep doing it. Okay, what's up? Um, well, I agree with everything you said, and it's like your whole philosophy. And the best part is that you're a synthesizer because that is what the yes. planet lacks. Yeah, is well, somebody who can synthesize. So thank you. Oh, sweetheart, you're you're more than welcome. Well, you know, I just put it this way. Um, I chose not to, because I feel, you know, I chose not to have family, or uh, I have a great family, but not to have any children or family, okay, in this life. Because what I saw early on, even though I had great examples of that, was that this is not functional and easy to pull that off. So I have the highest respect for people who do that and bring and guide souls here because these new kids and adults are kick-ass. They're amazing. I'm getting to know many of them. So I knew I couldn't do both, and I knew that I had done that in other lives, and I didn't feel like I was missing out at all. So like all of us, we just follow our passion. And what I actually do, I do body work and healing and and consulting and that on one side, but I actually three days doing nothing but research every week. And I don't, you know, just to keep up with things. And there is no way anyone would have the time to do that, who is (laughs) running a normal life. (laughs) This is true. Right. So, you know, I look at it as you're the part of me. I don't know enough about you yet, but I look at it as you're the part of me. Thank you so much for having the grace and the patience to do what you're doing here. And I'm the part of you that is trying to get the facts and um, different perspectives so that I can share them with you when you don't have time for that. So there you go. (laughs) How did you know that? Because I'm so family orientated. It's like yeah. the matriarch of the family. I'm a matriarch. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's where I come from. And I, I chose that. But I would yeah. love to be a researcher <laughs> and actually have a giant bunch of research around me, but I haven't had time to do any of it. But well, oh, so I think thing. we appreciate each other. <laughs> oh, we do. Yeah. I, I mean, just just around the coronavirus, and I send out shout outs for people. If you want to be on my email list, I don't. I'm not going to barrage you. I'm not that kind of person, but I will happy to send you the shout-outs of the best immune stuff and the little things I've been working that I would say it amounts to hundreds of hours, yeah. However, now, I would get on my knees and bow to you, but I'm not that limber. So, (laughs) (laughs) And I'm not that young. (laughs) So I think the most important job 
the most important job is to bring these souls in and provide a nurturing, open questioning, you know, environment so that they can flourish and they can practice the skills that are asleep in them. And and I honor you. I can feel the strength of your being and that you have done that. And thank you, girlfriend, because I wouldn't have had the patience to do that. <laughs> Not this time. Next time, maybe. Yeah, I do have a lot of patience. Yeah. I do. I can feel So that. I think my question for you is how along the path am I and what are my other responsibilities? Because, you know, you doubt yourself. All the, I don't know. I doubt myself now and then because mm. my favorite expression of my life is what the F. That's basically <laughs> how I live my life. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Are we allowed to say that on radio? I'm not sure. I, just said that, I didn't say the whole thing, but that's okay. basically, I look at everything that's going on, I say, what the F, you know? Yeah. Yes, well, yeah. I've been I've been having fun driving everywhere and enjoying nobody else. <laughs> 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 and, you know, doing that. But anyway, um, so basically I want to be clear here. I come from an intuitive family, I would never define myself as a psychic or a psychic reader. Um, usually I'm very good at reading people when I have them in front of me and pick up a lot of kinesthetic information. I pick up some things from you, but you asked me, but I want to come back to you, okay? So I could give you my intuitiveness and things like that, but it's not the thing I would advertise. There are, much, there are people much better than that than me. Than me, But what I would say to you is being that you're such an old soul in who you are, and doubt is really normal. And hormones can affect that. So much can affect that. Uh, when we don't have the energy, we go into doubt. But I'll tell you what. Being up on this planet is half, your job's half done. Just to be here. Okay? I want, and so... What I want you to do, and you know this, you know this because you want the answer of what you should do and all of this kind of stuff. But you know what you should do and why you're here is for joy. So, oh, yeah, that's why <laughs> everyone's here, my love. So, so basically, and this will get into one of my future shows where I'll talk, synthesize and talk about the most simple ways of manifesting a warp speed. What you want. But the idea originally when we came here a long time ago was to be in joy. And there is a, um, do you know what Abraham Hicks works? Abraham? Some of it, yes. Okay, so if I have three minutes, I want to read something that explains why you're here and what you came to do. Can I do that? Yep. Yes, do it. Okay, okay. So uh, I'm pulling it out right now as we speak. So this is not me. This is a quote from Abraham, okay? All right. When you left the other side of your true home, I'm going to talk fast, so bear with me, or your true home to first come to earth, you agreed to go forward into physical experience while remembering that the larger part of yourself, what we call our higher self or super soul, still remains non-physically focused. You came to explore. And through physical manifestation and reflection, learn to hone what you most prefer moment by moment. Say to yourself, I will then focus on the direction of my preference until I accomplish vibrational alignment with my own inner being. And when I do that, my inner being or higher self will now know clearly what I am asking for and the easiest way to get there. It's not my job to discover the easiest way, by the way. It's your team's job. It, it will feed to me moment by moment in real time so your, your inner being will see it to you moment by moment in real time subtle ideas and impulses that will guide me joyfully along the path to the full unfolding of what I want to create moment to moment. And each time that happens, 
I will stand in a place with new manifestations and also a whole new set of contrasting experiences, which will then give birth to another new idea. And as that other idea comes, my inner being holds steady on that good new idea, even if I waver a bit with doubt and other emotions. As I tune, here's your answer, as I tune into my feelings of excitement, Satisfaction and love, I will come into alignment with my inner being. And once again, I will be receptive to receiving impulses and ideas that guide me. So I will not only be the creator, step one, I will be the receiver, step three, but the most important and exciting part of being physical with my inner being is step two. I will be able to witness and deli- to witness the deliberate, exciting unfolding of everything I asked for and am co-creating. And in that feeling, I will eventually come into full feeling of worthiness. I will come to expect that it is my natural birthright for good things to come to me. I will come to know that life is meant to be fun and that I'm designed to feel good. I let go of the struggle that will be more a part of my past and allow ease and flow to be my future unfolding experience. And most important, I will figure it out as I go because I'm here for a grand adventure and hopefully (laughs) remember to have fun and laugh along the way. This way I will learn to be a shining light in the world of physicality for others to help them attune and do the same. That's what you said when you came here. And that's what we are remembering minute by minute. So now, here in this very moment, Anne, you are getting clearer about what you want to focus on and what you no longer wish to create, thus the purpose of the virus, fear, excite, do you want to have passion, do you want to create, I go through a day and I start going, when I'm conscious enough, I start and go, okay, today is going to be a day full of awe and wonder. <laughs> That's what I like. Perfect. <laughs> there Perfect. Is not any, and, and by the way, because you're hard on yourself, I know you, this, there is not anything you are supposed to do. There is not anything that has been assigned to you. You get to choose. Thus, the important being a creator whose choice can shift, okay, from second to second, yes. meaning out of fear into love. We react at the level of our consciousness, the level of our fear, and the level of our love. <laughs> you are actually so free that you can choose bondage. You are so free, Anne that you can choose to freak yourself out with fear. You are so free <laughs> that you can now choose to liberate yourself. <laughs> That's why you're here. <laughs> I love it. Fantastic. <laughs> Nicole for being there. Sure. Yeah. And yeah, Nicole too. Where else would I be? <laughs> uh, facil- a good facilitator. Yeah. And You're awesome, Nicole. So um, and should I close right now because you've given well, me here a call. Here we are. We're half an hour past the top of the hour. That was an epic call. There's still more callers. It's up to you. I will follow your I will needs. stay as long as you want. I am cruising. You want to do one more caller and then wrap oh, up? Of course. I could take a hundred. Except you're going to have to go get yourself something to eat. Okay, Eric, four, six. You are in luck. You're still on the air. What's your first name? Hello? 
six four six. Okay, the lines have gone weird. Well, there we go. So here's where we're at. We've got three minutes to the bottom of the hour. Do you want to do that uh, three minute meditation? Um, I'd rather take questions. I really would because the meditation I'll bring in in the next show, and it's mostly. Okay, let's do that. It's important. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's leave it for next one. So basically we have, oh, two minutes to the bottom. So we'll start the new show at the bottom of the hour. So here's where we're at. Barely got through one or two questions. Best show ever. 23 years. Wow. And thank God we found you. Um, Aww, let's, thank get you do, let's get you to do two minutes of shameless self-promotion. What do you want to share with people? Oh, you know what? Um, all I what I want to do is, if you feel like availing yourself of some of the things that I've synthesized, uh, and you're, of course, processing where you stand with this virus, and I, I am here to tell you that um, it is the, the numbers are low. In the entire United States, as of today, only 600 have died, and most of those have had lung issues or older, okay? So this was something. However, there are some plans coming down the line. Now, it should even out by the end of April, okay? But they learned a lot, and we learned a lot, the ones who love making bioengineering viruses for fun, okay? We learned a lot. We learned how freaked out we can make ourselves. (laughs) And so um, we need simple tools, and just something I do, and then just a short little prose. But in the meantime... Go to merely at supersoulsolutions.com. That's my email. And you can request that I send you supplements. I'll do a transcription of what I had planned for today. Uh, it'll take me a couple days to do. I'll be happy to send that to you. I have to share anything that I have. In the meantime, one of the things that really heals this virus is quinine, just what, which is called also Jesuit bark and MMS, which you – can get the recipe for and need to make yourself. Uh, do take all the vitamins, especially D and D3, sunlight. So many things help heal this. But most important, it's your consciousness. It's relaxing enough. It's empowering yourself and slowing down enough so you have a chance to move out of the reptilian brain that is reactive and programmed for fear into your higher self integrating more with you. So uh, what I do, I'm going to just give you a quick, quick, quick thing that I do. So basically, most of us have limiting thoughts, self-judging thoughts all the time. So when I'm more aware of being in an awareness practice, which is like an oxymoron, but um, I will catch myself doing that thing. Oh, that person. Oh, this. Oh, that blah, blah. And what I do is I immediately go, stop. And sometimes I'll say this out loud when I can or to myself. I'll say, stop. You are just a tape. You are not. And I imagine that thought going in a poof of light. Then I take a big breath. And I imagine coming from my higher self through my head into my heart, golden light. And as I exhale it, I exhale it out through my entire body. And I do this several times. And as I do this, I reframe the thought, which could be anything like, um, so you've gone out of a program thought because most thoughts are not real. They are nothing but deep grooves in your brain that are programming. So you're stopping that or deleting it, and then you're resetting, and you reset with a positive thought which I love myself, I enjoy myself, I'm going to have fun right now. Uh, I'm sure there was just a misunderstanding. You know, whatever it is, you can reframe. Now, believe it or not, this character named Bashar, Nicole, that I, I think you interviewed, he's a very interesting hybrid being. He's my favorite. Yeah, he is too. He's like... He, uh, that's a Sony, you know, part human, part yeah. data. Long, long story about that. He is wonderful. Anyway, um, he mentioned once, I caught this briefly, that we jump 
Okay, because we're actually multidimensional, so we jump 93,000 times a second into different realities. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so if we were aware of that, we'd be in the nut house because we can handle it. So much right. of that is in the subconscious and our higher self. However, we are determining second to second to second, both individually and as a collective whole, what reality we choose to create. And every now time, this is how I got rid of cancer really fast. Because when you were absolutely in now time, it didn't exist. <laughs> a whole other story. Huh. But anyway, so, so this is, even if you don't buy into the fact that you're a full-on creator with source or anything like that, even if you buy into it a little bit and play with that thought, it will raise your frequency and it will, it will create your thoughts manifesting more quickly or not. But, but just by doing that simple thing where you stop, you reset, you acknowledge that that thought's not real because when I'm working on bodies and someone's thinking something, the body thinks it's dying. It yep. doesn't differentiate because to the body, your mind is God. That's another story we'll get into in one of the future shows. But anyway, so so – that's what I'd like to say. That's what I use. It takes like one minute. You'll get really good at it. And it's just kind of like talking to yourself and resetting. And then you breathe golden light. I love golden light. You breathe it in and you exhale it out through your arms. You exhale it out through your feet. And then you see your entire aura filled with it, like three feet out. And then you just start the next thing. And at first when I started doing this, I was probably having to do it quickly because I'm impatient sort of person. Uh, probably about 20 times a day when I was aware. But um, so, but that hopefully will be useful to you guys. And um, until then, because I know we're over time, but so until then, I would like you to remember this. The essence of life is to care. The secret of life is to dare. Courage. The adventure of life is to learn, and there's never any end to that. The challenge of life is to change, and the joy of life is to love. And you're in the second part. The challenge of life is to change because you've mistaken your thoughts for you. You've mistaken your programs or what other people think and say as you. This is activating, and there are, by the way, there are souls that always choose, souls choose about five exit points before they incarnate, and accidents can be one, and illnesses are often a major reason. So we, from our perspective, go, oh, my God, all these people died, and I do not mean to belittle the loss or grief of that. However, from a higher perspective, a soul takes themselves out only when they take themselves out. So that many don't want to continue going through this transition time. They want to return to home and help from the other side. So, there, you know, and other people will develop an immunity. I believe this virus, at least in my area, Northern California, was here in December. Because starting in January, you know, I've, I've worked, like I said, 40 years with people on their bodies, everything else. And, um, this is, I would say, from the end of the, well, I would say the end of November, first part of December, to the end of January or first part of February, I was seeing worse symptoms than they're reporting today. In other words, everyone, almost I everyone agree. was. Okay? So my yep. belief is we already dealt with the virus. Now, it is two viruses in one, and it does mutate, but so what? So does our body. Incredible thing. Incredible. We are known throughout the universe and galaxy as the most adaptable, regenerative. And, and I'm going to bring forward some experts in regenerative stuff. I mean, there is so much. I mean, you would not have one minute of fear if you knew what we actually could pull off. <laughs> but this is a whole, this is a whole uh, experience. And, and my favorite quote, I think this is Bashar's Nicole, but I love this. I might, I might, I'm doing this from memory, so I might just add a few of my own things. 
So hopefully people can kind of consider the concept that we have what's called a higher self or an oversoul, whatever term you want to use. And that's infinite and immortal. And that's very largely correct, you know, connected with creator, so to speak, or source. Has access to everything. Now, if we are to consider that the purpose, one of the basic purposes in life is for continual soul growth and integration, why would that be important? Because that's how we feed back into one, therefore feeding source itself and learns from, is also we came to earth because it's one of the playgrounds for for learning unity through maximum diversity. This planet was set up as a zoo and vacation planet. It has the, mo- the, the Earth, uh, who is a lo- very light being and masterful, her life charter was to be the planet that had the most variant life forms and beauty that could be found throughout the whole cosmos in one place and the most diverse DNA. Thus, you have, if you look out your door, whatever it is, 85 million species of animals, insects, stuff alone. All these can be on other planets, can be larger, can be nine feet tall on other planets, all kinds of things, but we are the place. And so when we originally came here, we came and went, came and went. It's like a vacation plan. Long time ago, because obviously no one's been told the truth about their history yet. But um, so it, that was her goal. And she, okay, this is how I look at it, of course. This is just my viewpoint. Um, when I talk to the bodies, the bodies are Earth's children. They're made from her elements, and they go back to the earth. So in doing so, she contributes a part of her consciousness into your body. Now, that consciousness is amazingly wise and capable. Okay? You are doing over a million functions, your body is, a second with you, without your conscious involvement. And it does a beautiful job. And it is able to mutate. It is able to upgrade. We are known that we are able to do this. And when they eventually tell you the truth about the DNA, you're going to be so thrilled about all of that. Um, So we are from the stars. So our soul is from the stars, so to speak. And our bodies hold the resonance of Earth. And that is why the ultimate mastery here is we were designed as antennas. Those walking antennas. We are electromagnetic beings. We are energetic, vibrational beings of light. We are immortal and infinite. And we have barely touched our innate capacities. And one of these capacities is our body's ability to mutate and adjust fast to emergencies. An example of that, I guess, would be Hiroshima. You know, when that ball went off, we thought that there wouldn't be any future generations. Well, that hasn't happened. So we are designed on Earth as off-bright walking antennas. Our DNA strands are designed as antennas as well. We receive both subconsciously and consciously subtle messages from our higher self, and we can think of that as coming down through the crown of our head as hunches or intuitions or whatever. And then our lower spine and feet serve as the grounding with Mother Earth, and by the way, most of you maybe know this, if you walk barefoot on Earth for 30 minutes, five of your physical parameters like blood pressure realign. I'll tell you many more stories about that. But So we are here. So right now, when we're in fear, most people leave their bodies, and the bodies are left to themselves, right? And then the bodies are imprinted with your terror. What would happen um, on the body whisper? So what would happen if we stopped and we go, oh, sweetheart, I know you're listening to all this fear around you, and you are so capable. I know exactly, you know exactly. And I, and I, I this is what I said in my body. I said, this is a variation of a snake virus, and you're not going to recognize it as something normal. So 
we're going to work with this together, and I'm going to work on my side and feed you some healthy food and do those things to make your job easier because I know you know exactly what to do to heal yourself now. So be it. I command that it be so, and I love you. That's how I work. Wow. Is still there? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Oh, my God. So here we are. Um, almost two hours for the, your intro interview show. <laughs> we have in pages. Um, we have to close now because we're almost done. Okay. It. okay. It All right. Was well, thank amazing. you for your extra time, sweetie. Do you need me to pay you for that or anything? Can I help you out? No. Oh, oh, you can always help us out. But you know, this was we go with the flow. We go with the flow. Okay. Where okay. the flow went. And it was important. So I'm very glad we went there today. And my God, I can't wait to your next show. <laughs> so <laughs> here's that. And, you know, anybody listening, send the email to on the air at telus.net. Find her all linked up. Um, she's all linked up at tele, or sorry, newsforthesoul.com on the schedule. And we will be back tomorrow. Yes. Thank you. And thank you, listeners. Thank you.